let's now shift our focus. It's ISRO's mission, which will be studying the sun. And it is all set to hit yet another milestone tomorrow, as it is set to be placed into a final orbit at its home, which is around 1.5 million kilometers away. Now, ISRO says it will reach close to 4 p.m. on Saturday and a final decision will be taken on whether to use the liquid Apogee engine or any other thrusters. Now, this decision will, of course, be based on the spacecraft's position on Saturday and it will be operational uh, and it will also go ahead and join four other probes which are already there. In fact, three of these probes already belong to the NASA. So this will be the first Indian probe that has been launched and it will be the first one to make its way there. In fact... Aditya L1 was launched way back in September and it commenced its journey to the final destination on September 18. And Aditya L1 that we're talking about right now is carrying seven instruments to study the sun and the solar storms with a planned five-year mission. So clearly there, a big, big news for India and all set for yet another milestone as far as the space sector is concerned. And we'll be discussing uh, more on this. We'll be trying to understand how important this is. And joining me on the broadcast is Mr. Suresh Naik, who's a former group director from ISRO, Mr. Nayak, appreciate you joining us on the broadcast. We are all talking about Aditya L1. There was a lot of excitement when it launched, but uh, with missions that go so far, which are so uh, such largely spacefaring, there are a lot of milestones that has to be crossed before it actually goes ahead and reaches a spot and starts contributing. In fact, this probe that we are talking about is all set to enter a halo orbit around L1, which will allow the probe to steadily circle the sun. And of course, it will maintain its trajectory via small bursts from thrusters. Help us understand how important a milestone this is and also how has Aditya L1 performed so far? Yeah, actually, uh, Aditya L1 has performed so far in a textbook manner and uh, it has uh, crossed so many critical stages of, uh, you know, first getting launched in the right. right orbit, then completing the orbits in the sun's, I mean, uh, Earth's orbit and then proceeding towards uh, uh, sun uh, to in the direction of uh, the L1 point in the right direction without really uh, missing its path in a way. That itself is a very big achievement because it has been a 15 lakh kilometer journey and that too in the cold vacuum. And uh, there are so many uh, forces acting in, from the celestial bodies and the navigation system on the satellite has been perfectly working and keeping it on the track. And the propulsion systems have done their job beautifully. Right. Now, if tomorrow, ISRO is on the brink of achieving a, another historic milestone. Uh, in the, actually, I can say uh, it is uh, so far not conducted this kind of operation of insertion of a satellite in a halo orbit uh, around L1, that is Lagrange 1 point, between Sun and Earth. Now, uh, you know, if uh, it does not really try to insert this into the halo orbit, then what will happen is uh, the satellite will uh, continue to proceed towards sun because then it will be under the, the influence of sun's gravity and earth's gravity will end there right so that is going to really make the whole operation unsuccessful we don't want that to happen so therefore it is essential right mr suresh Naik, from what i understand from what you're saying this is of course going to be a very critical and a very complicated step and this of course is going to take a lot of uh, uh, critical functionality is to go right for isro to accomplish this given the fact that it has been a textbook launch so far one only hopes that this goes ahead and does that. And in fact, I'll have to share an interesting things about uh, the sun with our viewers here. And of course, we talk a lot about the sun and the mystery surrounding, uh, surrounding the sun and all those things. But the fact of the matter is that the sun's corona, which is the outer layer of the sun, is much more hotter than the sun's surface. And this is exactly what the Aditya L1 will be probing. Now, Mr. Nayak, help us understand why is India launching this probe? Why is India launched this probe? And why are we studying the corona? And also, why is the sun's outer atmosphere much more hotter than its surface? Yeah, actually, you know, we should understand uh, the basic mechanism, how uh, the sun works. Uh, it works on the nuclear fusion reaction. Hydrogen atoms combine. Instead of, you know, breaking the atom, there we come, uh, create the energy by fusing the atoms. 
and then the huge temperature and energy is created and pressure. Under the pressure, the energy and the temperature travels towards the outer layers. And that is how the outer layers are formed. And uh, the photosphere is the layer which really gives us the light and uh, heat. Okay, And then afterwards, there is a uh, uh, chromograph uh, and uh, then there is a corona. Now, corona, uh, really, as you said, uh, it actually, it has a very high temperature. And uh, it is uh, in the order of a million of degrees uh, Celsius. And at the same time, if you see the photosphere, right. etc., these are just about uh, 6,000 degrees Celsius or so. So this is a mystery which the scientists are going to analyze. I mean, so far they have been trying why this so much of temperature is flowing towards corona and why this corona is really formed under what right. conditions, etc. Because, uh, you know, we can use that uh, particular uh, data to prevent uh, so many uh, potential problems to our earth systems, particularly in the communication systems and uh, uh, the uh, satellites, as well as the astronauts who are doing spacewalks, etc. Because the radiation emitting from this corona is extremely harmful. And that radiation is uh, coming from the solar wind and it contains highly charged particles like electrons and protons and that are very harmful and really... Right. Also, uh, Mr. Nayak, you like know, you're mentioning, the corona is what uh, will be studied by the Aditya L1 probe. Uh, sorry, I have to interject you there. Uh, the corona is what we're talking about. And in fact, uh, we have a special uh, graphic also done. I'll ask my team to play that on uh, the Lagrange point L1. Now, this is going to be the final destination of Aditya L1. And a lot of people might be wondering, why are we going so far and parking our probe? Why are we not studying the sun right from uh, right from our own atmosphere like a lot of other probes also do? But again, it is very important to understand that there is one particular mysterious spot in space where the gravity of our planet, the gravity of the sun and also the centrifugal force of the spacecraft almost cancel each other out. So, Mr. Nayak... This almost creates a parking spot for this probe wherein once it reaches there, it no longer has to use any fuel. It goes there, it parks itself and that is it. As the two planets move, as the sun and the earth move, the uh, satellite will also continue to move without using any energy. So it's a very, very special and also a mysterious spot that we're going to. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, as you said, it is correct that it will be using a very low fuel for station keeping. Because uh, there are uh, no uh, substantial right. forces like sun's gravity and other things. But still, moon's gravity and Mars' gravity will be acting on our satellite, even in that hollow orbit. And that will also create perturbations and drift in its orbit. And that we'll have to correct continuously. And for that, we have to use fuel. Uh, very, very carefully because, you know, it has to last for a long time. And though I can say that fuel used to keep it in the orbit is much less, even then there is a tremendous uh, uh, complex operation to keep it in the halo orbit because there are perturbations uh, in, uh, due to the solar radiation acting on it as well as uh, the gravity of uh, Moon and Mars. Okay, because of that, we had to precisely, uh, you know, keep the satellite in the orbit. And at the same time, I would say the fuel management is very critical. And we had to see the position and the velocity of the satellite at a, in its orbit is precise. And that's why the navigation system has to be correct. Right. And right. our ground system, ground stations, they have to continuously monitor this and they should be sensitive and responsive to any perturbations. Another thing is, uh, you know, the challenge is there are some sensitive uh, instruments on our satellite, like uh, coronagraph and uh, second thing is UV imaging telescope. And uh, when uh, they are inserting right. in, uh, into the halo orbit, we have to take care that the orientation is uh, such that these are protected from direct radiation from sun. And uh, for that, uh, what we had to do is uh, actually uh, some kind of a casing 
on uh, these uh, instruments or uh, we had to see that the orbit is designed in a particular way so that all the time it is uh, protected from the sun's direction and uh, the particles radiating from the sun are also harmful. So in order to protect from those, we had to radi use radiation hardened material for these instruments, which are very sensitive. That is why right. the whole process of right. inserting in a uh, uh, you know orbit around a point. So far, uh, ISRO has been inserting uh, in uh, celestial bodies uh, orbit, and that is relatively easier because once you make the velocity lesser than the escape velocity of the celestial body, uh, then uh, that uh, gravitation of the celestial body captures the satellite in its orbit. So uh, you don't have to spend any fuel and keep uh, that kind of a precise navigation control. But here there is no celestial body. First time, Israel is right. Mr. Naik, of course, uh, you're talking about all the complex operations involved and also how uh, how there will be multiple instruments that will also have to be protected. I mean, uh, our viewers must be thinking right now, I mean, talking to someone 1,500 kilometers away, we, we face a lot of communication issues. But imagine contacting a remote object that is 1.5 lakh kilometers away and making sure that it's oriented properly, making sure that the thrusters fire at the same time and all of this despite the communication lag. It's a mind-boggling feat and of course something that a lot of Indians would be proud of. Mr. Nayak, appreciate you joining us on the broadcast with all your insights and details there. This uh, is again something that we will be wishing uh, does well and the Aditya L1 probe will be very keeping a very close eye on all of that.